Good morning and welcome to the Battery Doctor's YouTube channel and here is a new, new electronic load I wanted to test. Um, uh, we usually have these loads we have been using for a while. Uh, I like them because it actually tells the capacity very accurate and uh, this one has dual fans which I think is good. And yeah we were r running them almost daily and testing so many batteries and having good results. So why would I buy another 150 watt load? The big problem with this is that it can just reach 150 watts. And in this particular model if you, it says it you can reach 180 watts but then it burns up. The MOSFET burns up. Uh, so we have to manually adjust the maximum watt to 150 and then it cuts off. Also the original power adapter is really bad and it comes with really poor wires so we have to do our own. Yeah it works if you know how to use it. If you don't know how to use it you will short circuit it and have to buy a new one. So we saw this on some other YouTube channel or if it just appeared at uh, Aliexpress like stuff usually do. And I'm already super impre impressed by this and that is just because of the packaging. I never seen something like this from China that is low cost. Just look at this box. It's perfectly fitted for the thing inside. And it has uh, a strip that you remove to open it up. And it also has a clear label. And no of that ugly shiny yellow tape on it. And it says both in English and Chinese. So I'm already super impressed. I already open it up and have a look. And you remove this one. Perfectly fitted to the case. And you have the manual. Like, just like when you open up an iPhone or a Samsung, really professional packaging. And here you have the adapter. Uh, it's a 1 amp, uh, 12 volt adapter. And these really only come with the US plug as a standard. I've asked several suppliers, but no one can get any of these load tested with anything than the US. Because that's how they are manufactured for the US market. So you can only get these ugly, unsafe EU plugs. So I suggest you spend like two or three bucks to get a new one if you're in Europe. Uh, these are really unsafe because they can still... You, you can actually accidentally short circuiting it because it's visible. We don't really like this so we will go get something better probably. And then we have the actual load which is very well packed in um, water protection. Maybe it's also ESD, I don't think so. So let's compare it to the old load we had. Yeah, it's roughly the same size, but it's a little bit more compact. Uh, we do not get any wires at all with this model, which is fine because the original wires are basically crap anyway. One thing I like with this, they have actually dots on the potentiometers. So you can see <laughs> how, how you adjust them. This one do not. I had to write with a marker to have any idea of uh, where it starts and stops. Yeah, uh, two things we do not like about this one is that you cannot set under voltage for the load. So we had one or two batteries die where the BMS was um, not correctly installed. It was just connected to the charging for charging and discharging. And we tried to set the, the load on this one, but it wouldn't save it. And also we connected it via USB to a computer. It says it should be able to connect to a computer via USB. Uh, but the computer wouldn't recognize it. And I don't even think the data pins are connected for these USB ports. Uh, this one usually run up to 180 watts uh, as a preset. But they cannot handle 180 watts. So we had like four in a row that blow the MOSFETs. Because we just run them on 180 watts um, for a few seconds. Uh, so that was disappointing. You can set the maximum wattage to 150 watt. We do that now and then it turns off by itself. But we destroyed four of these machines just by it coming at the preset of 180 watts. So we're really looking to see if this one is better. And so far everything looks better. But we don't know how accurate it is, how reliable it is. We like that it has four USB ports. And it's difficult to see if they are actually connected because this seems to be a dual layer PCB. I'm making a new manual in clear English and Chinese. Low voltage. We hope we can set this. So we're gonna run with the original adapter now just to see how it works. We can do it safely by switching this off. Inserting this 
let's just see if it's compatible with the old one yeah 6 to 12 volts was the old one yeah it's the latest battery we tested 21 amp hours and it has different displays which you prefer backlight on 300 volt this one we couldn't set which was very disappointing and here we set it to 160 we don't know if it's 150 or 160 but 160 is okay we haven't had any problems with that but you shouldn't run it on 180 it actually says the do it yourself more logo and website and they have capacity tested this that's nice we also think they capacity test this because they come with spooky data and they have tested it one amp hour that's nice for seven minutes they've been testing this that's really nice and we bought these copper ones uh, which is far better than the aluminium ones because we like them to be small and isolated so we can fit into contacts so using copper is really really good and we, I'm gonna have short wires for this one and I have this small kind of fuse 20 amps that would be fine for this machine that can run up to 10 so maybe you can see the screen better yeah we'll have to do and we will connect it to this 60 volt battery we won't do a full capacity test now on screen we will just connect it and see how much it sounds and 66.2 it's almost fully charged yeah these are a little big but sometimes you can slide them over the isolation uh, 66.5 I'll try and reset it which you usually do by holding in the button yeah it's reset let's it change the menu as well yeah it seems to be having the same type of display and there's a button sound but it's a mechanical one backlight on over voltage here we want to set it oh Oh, perfect yeah we will go to the next menu 10 amps it's set to 150 watts that's really good so we're ready to run we will see how much uh, uh, amps the course will do and one problem with the old one is that it didn't react until we were at like 50% rotation this one seems to be similarly designed Here, we actually had a whole rotation before it started to notice. And the fan is not running because it's not hot. So the core, the fine one, yes, was 0 0.57 amps. Then you have to do very carefully with this one. It started at just like a few degrees. And I usually run all tests at 2 amps, so they are comparable. But this one is working very good. It's very easy to set it precisely. Nice. So, and as you can see, the degree of the MOSFET is rising to 27. I don't know when it turned. I, I don't really like that it's not making a sound because I don't feel like it's on. Yeah, the MOSFET is 34. Are you gonna... Swish! Come on now. And one good thing with this one is that the lights actually turned on when there was a load. Running 137 watts. We're gonna increase... Now it turns on at 40 degrees. Nice. Very nice fan. 
It's not a Noctua, but it's running pretty silent. We're gonna squeeze this one up to 150. Oh, and it says over what? Great! But it goes down. This one you have to replug it and connect it again. This was a really nice machine. I will put a link to it and at this I will also start shelling because there were no faults except for um, it not having these wires and not having a um, real EU adapter. We will of course test this, um, replace one of our stations with this one, we can probably press that one and um, keep running it. We don't know how accurate it is yet, so we will compare a battery, maybe not this large one that takes like one full day. I'm gonna set the stop to 65.3 to see that it actually cuts off. 65.2 that's enough. So I will actually leave it on and you guys can tell me if it stops and I will go get some more Java. And you will also get to listen to it. It actually shut off! That's good. It started right away, but that's because it released the voltage and it will actually protect the battery. Nice!